Are you tired of not knowing where your money's going or not being able to take that trip to Europe that you've always dreamed of? In this video, I'm going to show you the steps in creating a budget that will help you achieve your wildest dreams. And I'm not joking. Go and listen to the first video of this series where I share what budgeting did for me and my husband. And in case you're new here, my name is Megan. And if you're like me, you have things you want to do, additions you need on your home, trips you want to take. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you the steps in creating a budget for 2023 and beyond. This will help you keep your spending under control and make sure that your hard earned money is being put to good use. This video is the second video in our series on budgets in 2023. So if you haven't seen our first video, go and watch it first. As a refresher, a budget is an organized financial plan where you outline how you're gonna spend your money and how you will intentionally put money aside for the things you want the most. If you realize that you don't have the money for the things you want, it's helping you make other decisions so you can get there. There's many different types of budgets, so don't get too caught up in the beginning of which one you need to have. Just get started and have a goal to make progress. Everyone benefits from a budget. Single parents, teenagers, married couples, business owners. A budget will help you see clearly, assist you in making smart decisions, and result in not only having peace of mind, but also more freedom to choose the life that you want and the people that are in your life. So hopefully you've taken action on the prior video suggestions of putting three months of your accounts together to see where your current spending is, because now we're going to jump into the actual steps to create your personal budget. So if you did do those steps, you know how much you spent and now you need to put it into that budget and you need to put it into the app or the spreadsheet. So we are going to, in real time, we're going to create that budget because it's not a once and done activity. It's something that once you create it, you will use it over and over again and you'll be able to continue to use it. So taking the time to take financial control will be, I promise you, one of the best decisions that you will make. And it will give you the confidence that will result in getting a head start on some of your biggest goals or making decisions that you need to make to get where you want to be. What we're going to do is go over to my screen and my board so I can show you and do it with you. All right. So I'm about to share the budget that I've used for years that you can swipe and use yourself. I like to be hands on to update, to change, to feel it. So use this template and you can change it. You can also use the apps that I mentioned or I'm going to be mentioning if I haven't mentioned them yet in the video, or you can use, uh, you know, you can create your own, but this is how I do it. So in the first tab I have go through and figure out for three months, what you're actually spending. And you can do that to have a reference because the second tab is your budget. This is where you're going to be putting your money in. So choose where you're going to do it. And then now we need to start entering numbers. So step two is to start putting all your income sources in. This one has some numbers. I put them in there just to show you. But if it was my husband and I, I'd put his name in one color, my name in a different color. And you want to put in here and how I built this one is your salary or your base pay. That could be hourly. You put it in. It should be relatively the same every month. So when you put these you know, numbers in, it'll update through the rest of them, but you can override them and put a number in. If you get bonuses, put those in, maybe get them quarterly, maybe you get them monthly, put them in. Commissions, same thing, put in what commissions are. So you can kind of see um, all the income is accounted for. A second job, put that in. So now it's giving you your gross before taxes, that first green line. So that's what you're making before anything comes out. So now a lot of people say, okay, this is what I have to work with. We've got to remember that's just gross. Now we need to get to your total net income. So the first thing you do after you have your gross in is you go through your paycheck deduction. So anything that gets deducted from your paycheck, that could be retirement, that could be health insurance, the portion you pay. It could be a health savings account or a dependent care account. It could be miscellaneous I left you can fill in. That could be maybe you pay for a um, eye or dental plan. So put those in because then now you'll see here, okay, it goes from 12,250 to 11,340. And you want to do that because then you get taxed on that 11,340. That's the benefit of pre tax deductions. You're paying for things before it's taxed. When you pay for them out of your bank account, you're paying more. 
Now you want to enter your paycheck deductions. So you want to, you can take your paycheck and actually just put them in, or you can see I put like 30% in here. And then if you're self-employed, you need to calculate how much you need to set aside and you need to set up a separate bank account for that. So enter the amount so that every month, you know what you're setting aside. And then now you're going to have your total net income. That's the amount you have to spend. So now let's go down and you want to start filling in what's your mortgage payment, your first mortgage. And maybe you'll only have first mortgage because your taxes, insurance, everything's in there. So you make the other zeros. But if you pay things separately, list them out. Then put all your utilities right here. I like to average stuff. So average out your utility bills. After you go through all those home expenses, now you have your insurances, life insurance, um, like you could have a jewelry insurance. I also have in this category, our accountant who does our tax prep. What are we paying them? Because we need to have money to pay that. After that section, okay, what are we spending for our monthly daily living? So babysitting and daycare, do we have preschool we pay for? Do we pay for extra babysitting? Do we have a cleaner who comes to the house? Do we have kids who we pay activities to do travel sports? what how much are we paying in monthly health co-pays what about prescriptions groceries eating out do you have a gym membership put them all in here do you tithe so put your tithe into this section here if you tithe if you don't you can just put zero in do you have pets because if you have pets you have pet food you have to take your pets to the vet maybe they get groomed put them all in there and the last sections, these are the, and this is step three, which is not just doing your expenses that you have monthly, but also factoring in your discretionary long-term expenses. So gifts, like if all of a sudden you get to December and you have Christmas and you're like, oh my gosh, like it happened again. It's Christmas. I don't have money. You didn't plan, right? So you've got to, that's why there's the, those Christmas account clubs where they take it out of your paycheck. You can do it for yourself. You don't have to have the bank do this for you. So birthday gifts, Christmas, um, if you buy clothes, if you want to go on vacation, put all those things in that you're going to be setting some of your money aside. I have another category, which is long-term savings. So that's like kids college accounts. If you want to create an account to help your kids buy a car or for their weddings, um, this is, for my husband's self-employed retirement savings. So this is self-employed savings retirement. That's actually a deduction. I should put it up top. And then pocket money. If you want to give yourself some extra pocket money here, that's up to you. So it adds up all your expenses, which is that 9568. So that means we have a problem because we're getting 7968 and we have 95, 68 in expenses. We're $1,600 under. Now, if you get bonuses and you know, hey, I'm gonna have this extra money, you'd be taking out a savings for some things. So if you don't have that, you wanna go back up and say, all right, what do I need to cut out? What can't I do? And maybe here you don't have your, once you put in the right amounts for your mortgage, or if you don't have a second mortgage or you start going down and looking and saying, okay, well, and most of you aren't going to have tax prep for that much, but maybe you have to look and say, you know what, I'm going to have to clean. My kids are going to have to help me clean so we can do the things we enjoy. So, Hey kids, we're not going to have a cleaner anymore. We want to keep those things. Okay. Where, where does that put us? We're okay. We're doing a lot better here. We're closer to 500. So maybe you can't put that much into their college savings, but you can put $50 a month and you've got three kids. So that's $150. Ideally, you still have some extra to put on debt that you have or to put into savings accounts. That, that's the goal here. So maybe you both need to have pocket money of $150 each month. Maybe your vacation isn't something that costs $3,000. Maybe it's a camping trip. So you move that down to $150. So now we've got a little bit of extra here and with whatever extra you have with what you're putting together, then you take that extra and you decide where you're going to put it. So if you have debt, I definitely put it on your debt first, work on that debt snowball and you can put the balance of the debt, how much you apply each month, but you want to get this down to 
zero. That's a zero based budget. And so then you can see, all right, here's the goal. And then how did I do? Let's compare it to what we added up in when you do your every three month review of your categories. So hopefully that helps. You can steal this budget template that I use. Let me know in the comments if you have questions on any budgets you've tried to do, where you've struggled. I will be doing a live here um, in the next few weeks where you can ask me questions. Um, and if you are self-employed, I also do the same thing with my businesses that you can also use to help budget and help your business flow and have the cash flow that you need. So I hope that helped. Get budgeting. I promise you, you won't regret it, guys. So I hope that those steps and the things that I showed you are going to help you start building your own budget that's going to help benefit you and your family. Now, go and work on your budget for another day or two. Keep tweaking it. Make sure to watch. We have one more video in this series about creating your budget in 2023 and how to handle if things kind of get off course. And if you'd like to hear more about personal finances, savings, and real estate tips and topics, I would love to hear from you in the comments below to see what your biggest question is around budgeting or where you struggled trying to create a budget or stick to a budget. We all have those problems when we're doing this. We all get off course. I hope that the video gave you some of the insight that you're looking for and that you'll join us for more information on next week's video. And if there's someone you know who could benefit from this information, please share the video with them. I'd be honored and grateful if you subscribe to our channel Hit that bell so you get notifications. Otherwise, continue to check out all the other finance, home buying, and mortgage tips and guides on our channel. I can't wait to see you next time.